All right, so we'll talk about the game just as an overall description uh, first. Uh, it's a 3D uh, puzzle-based platformer. There's progression in that you unlock uh, new sphere types as you play. The sphere types uh, allow the sphere to take on a certain element with a button press. The level design gets progressively more complex as more of those are introduced. I'll start about the, the gameplay. Um, I think uh, one of the things that we wanted to focus on and discuss really early is we wanted the very iterative gameplay style so that the player um, can fail quickly but then get you know tossed right back into the action um, immediately and so then uh, while it's a little brutal you know you don't have life bars you just die and then you have to start over you can try again really quickly and I think we captured that in the game yeah I think that um you know, as far as the, the levels go and everything, the, the progression of it feels really natural, especially as you get new forms. Uh, it introduces new challenge at a pretty steady pace as you go. I mean, but when you're just debugging, you can just hop into some of the last levels. And if I haven't even been playing, I've just been coding for the last few you know, days or whatever, I am just like miserable bad and I'm like telling everyone, I hate our game because I'm really terrible at it. <laughs> but then you go back and you relearn what you're supposed to be doing. And so I, I think that, you know, as you play it, you actually get better at it. And that's one of the other things too with the, the progression we really nailed down. Well, and the other thing I would add would be all the levels are relatively short. So even if you fail, it's not... Um, a huge burden on the player to have to redo a large amount of content. Yeah. You know, it's oh, I screwed up. Okay, no big deal. I'll I'll Start. just restart, do it again, get it right, move on. Um, how do we feel that the game measured up to the initial vision? Um, I'll start a bit and just say I think the game's a lot smaller in some ways, um, and it's spot on in others. Uh, we cut the scope right. Um, at the right times, and even though we have a few less levels, we've, the ones we kept are really solid, and it's still a, a lengthy play experience. We originally planned five visual styles, like really expansive, diverse set of like a volcano scene and like a city scene and then space. Um, we ended up with one, uh, but I think the aesthetic is pretty solid for the one that we have. Uh, even though the game design document paints this really optimistic picture of what the game could have been, it's still exactly the game that we talked about and that we designed when we first started this. So that's really great. Yeah, I think that the, the heart and soul of the game really made it into the build. Uh, I think that happened pretty early, too, when, whenever we got some of the initial interactions, especially with the uh, K-actor, the ball moving naturally. You start to see the vision actually happen. So uh, trying to prove the game design concepts, I, I think that we, we definitely you know nailed that down as well. Features? Uh... I think there's a couple I'd like to talk about that I think are really cool. Um, some of them were planned and some weren't. Like the ball feel was something that we really tried and persevered through weeks of prototyping and research um, to do make Unreal do things that it's not really meant to do as a shooter. Um, it, it involved taking the pawn out, replacing that entirely with some really cool kinetic actor stuff. We got it there. And it feels right, and I think that feature is a huge deal. We've got a lot of cool cascade effects that made it in there for the end. It's really juicy looking, and the sound, I think maybe that was something that I didn't expect to be as high quality as as, um, as it ended up being. Yeah, yeah I'd uh, definitely like to thank uh, Jonathan Santoni and Marco Rim for their help with the, 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 the music. Definitely was the first thing that popped out to me and impressed me. No, I think you know the music um, it is spot on. It matches the visual style of the game. Um, you know, we intended it to be a sci-fi kind of futuristic, modern, you know, clean look. Um, we kind of wanted you know the space, and they really um, nailed it right on the head with the music um, and the sound effects too. Yeah. Yeah. I think the sound effects are, are, are great. The water moving through a grate, it's one of my favorite interactions in the whole game, and I just it makes me want to like go back and forth through grates over and over again just to, to hear it. <laughs> I felt they did really well creating those effects from the online environment that we've been dealing with. Uh, I know it was kind of hard at times to give them references to what we wanted, and 
they managed to pull it off pretty good. I know they had a couple iterations to do, but yeah, they, they definitely came through for us. Absolutely. Right on. on the sheer volume they were able to produce with, you know, and we were expecting, you know, maybe one, you know, one version of each, of, you know, each sound effect, and they would come in with four or five, you know, they just would tear through it and, yeah. you know, be creative and come up with different takes on it, which gave us a lot of different choices Techniques and processes, um, ideas. You think that that worked well? Um, yeah, you, I think that. Think? Uh, I think scoping early, like we did. I mean, going into this, I remember sitting down and like, we wanted to make sure that we put the game into uh, you know iteratable little tiny chunks that we could actually refine, as opposed to getting really ambitious. And we really played to each other's strengths and weaknesses too. Like we, uh, we all could come forward and say what we're comfortable with what we want to be doing and we all kind of, you know, picked up the ball and ran where others needed it, uh, where others needed a little bit extra help and, and, and vice versa. We had a really organic thing going there. So I think that uh, with that, we all we all grew a lot with that. We grew together as a team. And I think that the, the, the product itself actually shows that, that we worked really well at Wayne. Yeah, I would say, I mean, I think our biggest strength was the pre-production phase where we really – got a lot of the groundwork in place. We had, you know, solid concepts. And we had, okay, well, what if, you know, sessions where we sit there and go, okay, well, what if we can't do this? What's going to be our backup plan? We knew what we were going to do. There wasn't any panic or, um, you know, last minute, let's just throw something together. Um, and I think that was really helpful. Our group of talent that we have really helped us out just, Everybody kind of had their own strong points, and if anybody was falling short in an area, somebody else could pick up on it easily enough and fix any problems that we ran into. Um, and if anybody felt like trying something new, it was never a problem. I mean, everybody was very supportive of each other, and, you know, if somebody tried something and they failed at it, you know, kind of just brush it off and get back at it. So, yeah. It, it really worked out. I, I think we, I know we could have been tearing at each other's throats, but it was never the case. <laughs> <laughs> never really happened. That's good. Nope. <laughs> the only thing I'd touch on is that um, I, I feel like whenever there was a moment where somebody in the team uh, was really passionate about something, like, I really want to do this, or they have a cool idea, or just self-motivated and they want to go out and do it. We embrace the passion and embrace the chaos if there is some, um, just for the fact that um, to, to have something produced with passion, like I really just want to get in there and tear it up, um, always ends up being like really impressive, high quality, interesting stuff. And like Chris said, we had such a tight vision in the beginning I think we were all on the same page um, even when we uh, you know got creative individually uh, it still all came together like I think there's a lot of personal investment I can see from every designer in this team in the final product and, and that's really really awesome uh, we should probably talk about things that didn't go too well but maybe we can make it really quick <laughs> yeah uh, meeting on Tuesday if I can say anything to, <laughs> if I can say anything to anybody that's going into final project uh, meet as soon as you can because Monday. You're gonna be like, even Monday just yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Monday Monday morning because you're gonna end up losing an entire day's worth of work um, with you know having to get feedback back and then go from there so there were a lot of times where we would we would we would break on Tuesday night and then it would be nine ten o'clock we would have to put together what we're gonna be doing for the week and it sometimes led to pretty long weekends for a couple of us but uh, also uh, knowing what you're getting into some of those some of those unknowns that Chris was talking about, but oh, that, that's that's something we need to do. This is our fallback. You need to research. We should have researched our fallbacks a little bit uh, more. So some of those some of those late 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 nights on on the weekend when you're you know burning that midnight oil, uh, probably could have got a little more rest in that in that regard. But that's all I got. Yeah, actually, I'm, I was about to say almost the exact same thing about you know. That's good. Plus uh, one. <laughs> well, just, you know, we were, I mean, while we've all worked in UDK before, there was definitely stuff that we were trying to feel our way through um, where we didn't know the best technique. More or less, you know, had to do some experimentation. And uh, and actually, sometimes that actually worked well to our benefit where it made it better, um, even if 
you know, caffeine still didn't keep it. <laughs> um, and the only other thing would be communication. It's always hard to keep a good communication when we're, we're all working remotely. And, and I'm not checking in the code. <laughs> yeah, sometimes the communication is something gets checked in, and you're like, oh, okay, that, all right. <laughs> yeah, sometimes Vance and I were both doing the exact same thing and, time and realizing, oh, hey, oh, yeah, you're doing that, sorry. <laughs> uh, but those things happen, but, you know, on a, on a close team like we've got, no problem. Uh, I agree completely with all that. Uh, I would say do your research and try and have a good prototype early because that's where we found out that the you know our normal pawn character was not going to work for us. So. It's just kind of leaning. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the swaying, the swaying yeah. pawn. That's when we found out we were going to have to use the K actor for our... Yeah. Uh, that really paid off. It looked so interesting that, at least. Yes. Yeah, it would have looked interesting. <laughs> it would have looked interesting. Yeah, that's all that matters. would have played right <laughs> I think we all handled it very professionally, though, and it kind of proves that in the heat of the moment, like we were able to make what we needed to happen happen, even though the stress level was high. Um, the one thing I would say about stress level, um, for me personally, it was a paradigm shift going from uh, academically evaluated courses to project courses, and that was that's the thing I would get, um, if I could go back to the beginning and tell myself it's like. Just focus on the project, focus on the product. Um, it's really easy to get caught up in the minutia of, um, of individual grades, uh, deadlines. Uh, make your deadlines, get stuff in, but don't sweat the numbers. Let's just talk a little bit about the skill development that we all got to uh, revel in doing the crazy things that we did on this project. Um, Chance? Uh, yeah, so I kind of went into final project. You know, I remember some of the very first talks with Wayne about even wanting to, to work together and it was kind of like, I'm going to learn Unreal scripts because I want that. And so <laughs> uh, I feel that I've, you know, pretty come pretty far in that um, regard, especially compared to what I was three, four months ago. So there's not a whole lot that, I'm not. I'm no expert by any means, but there's not a whole lot that that I can't, you know, visualize and theorize in my head and and try to come to some sort of functional prototype of it at this point. I, I think that that that's my biggest takeaway from this project, um, personally, um, and 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 things that I I've learned. Three yes, Max. Um, I've been trying <laughs> to actually get my hands into it, and well, just between course load and everything else, you know, it was always kind of all right. Well, I'll do it next month and. You know, actually being able to finally just go, okay, I'm gonna jump into it and start learning it. Um, that was be the one if I was to pick that really I'm glad I was able to do. Uh, mine would definitely be uh, finally getting a better understanding of Unreal Script. I mean, definitely nowhere <laughs> near close to being an expert, but finally started getting a better grasp of how to do the basics um, and just making changes and additions to our main scripts. It's a good starting point, to say the least. I mean, I'm going to be working on this for months and years to come anyway, but uh, <laughs> it's definitely on my first task post school. Good attitude. Um, and I found out I enjoy it a lot more, too, so <laughs> once awesome. I know what I'm looking at. And just general use of UDK all around. Uh, definitely got to do some cool particle stuff, um, a little more into Kismet. It was a good experience overall. I learned maybe, uh, it's a good test of our skills. <laughs> Just wish you know some of our prior classes that handled some of that would have been uh, <laughs> a, little, a little more detailed. <laughs> well, not yeah. necessarily detailed, a little more recent. You know, we've yeah, had a big lap since we used it last, so there's a relearning curve for a lot of the stuff. Word. Um, I felt like there's some cool script uh, things that I was pulling my hair out on, but then like I got that great victory Fiero feeling um, with uh, some of the physics prototypes. That was really awesome. Um, but probably the biggest takeaway for me is uh, Cascade. You, you see that uh, there are a lot of big ticket games that like a uh, Space Marine that you scale for, and you're like, I, I want to learn that. You know, I want to, you know, increase. I want to add it to my resume, uh, and I think I did. Yeah, this this uh, game is going to get submitted to IGF in October for IGF 2013 in the student category. Um, I hear that there's like 200 annual submissions, so I'm hoping that we got a shot um, to get one of those showcase spots. But I guess we'll see, and we'll probably put in a little bit more time. But uh, I'm Wayne. Chance. Chris. Patrick. 
And we have been Sonic Baboon, bringing you Materius at Full Sail University. <laughs>